we had another windstorm and my burlap antenna wire got all bunched up. My treated burlap. It just, even though I had it secured to the wire, it got all bunched up. But I do have another antenna wire up there I've been experimenting with. It's a copper tinsel wire. I got that stretched out. I'll go up and take a closer look at it. So I'll climb up here. Sometimes these roofs can be treacherous in the winter time. We had a little bit warmer day today. So we had it melted off, swept off and melted. Gotta climb up here, a little icy. Gotta be careful of these sloped roofs. A step. Here we go. Now we're up here. Windy again. We had a freezing mist. There's that copper tinsel wire. You can see that close up. So the plan now is to take that treated burlap wire antenna down and try some copper mesh. So I'm going to unravel that. Take it down. Everything's got a, got a coating of ice on it. Ice coated. That burlap ribbon was starting to come undone too, and right now I got it tangled up in my uh, tinsel antenna. The stringer hanging down there. The burlap worked pretty good for picking up ambient energy. It just, it couldn't take the weather. The weather just, the wind played havoc with it. I'll finish taking it down. I get up over here. This is the copper mesh I'm going to use to string out as an antenna. It's uh, five inches wide. But this is doubled up. This is a mesh that's used for packing in cracks and stuff so rodents can't get through. They can't chew through. It's supposed to be pure copper. But this is like a doubled up layer. So I'm not, I don't need a doubled up layer. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut this apart and just use one layer. So this roll was 100 feet. And I'll probably cut 75 feet off and then cut it apart. So I just got one layer. The antenna runs are 150 feet, so that should do it. And this is actually pretty close to the price of burlap. It's cheaper than the copper tinsel and pretty close to the price of uh, burlap. So that's what's going to go up next. I have my copper mesh antenna up. It's kind of twisted around the wire a little bit, but that'll be all right. A little bit of a sag in it, but similar to my copper tinsel antenna sag. I really can't get any more out of it. My uplights just can't handle it. It's bone already, and I had to put two ratchet straps down on each end to hold it up. So now we'll go down and compare and see what's happening. I now have three lead-in wires to one for each antenna so I can change what's happening down below without having to come back up on the roof. So I got my three lead-in wires coming in through by the window. I got the tinsel antenna wire, just a bare copper wire. That's the center tallest wire and the mesh wire. And I will check the voltage on each one. And 
the shorted amperage current through the meter, I think we'll be able to see it like that. So, got a ground here. We connect it up here. Nope, that's this meter here. This, see, so let's start with the bare copper wire. Um, 34 volts. Uh, let's see, I'll try the tinsel wire. Antenna, 33 volts. And the mesh wire that I just put up. Uh, 33, 34 volts. It's a little bit lower than it was last time I tested this. The wire's on a different day with the burlap. I think it was like 36, and now this is jumping 33, 34. Okay, now we're going to switch over my ground. Connect it up over here. This is micro amps. You can see that shorted to the meter. First, I'll start with the find my other lead. I'll start with the bare copper wire. Uh, let's see. Oh, I gotta. Oh, this is DC. I gotta go to AC. There's a little bit of DC current here. Okay, this is a uh, 6.3 microamps on the bare copper wire. Oh, let's see, try the tinsel antenna wire. Connect that one up. 7.2. And I'll switch quick over to the mesh wire. Mesh antenna, I should say. Looks like it was 8.2 for a minute. So the mesh is the winner there. The tinsel was just about the same as when I had the burlap up there. So I switched over to check the frequency of what's on these antennas. Check it right here. See that. It's a waveform there. Uh, the frequency is a lot different than it was the other day when I was looking at it. 290, 250 kilohertz. I think last time we were seeing it was um, maybe 40 kilohertz. This is kilohertz. I don't know what that is. I think, I think everything I get in here is maybe just static. Static in the air is not a radio station. I think it's just a static, a jumble of everything, and this is just the prevalent one, probably with the strongest signal. And, oh, somebody asked me to check the DC voltage. If there is a, a DC voltage between the ground and the antenna wire. So I can do that with this meter here. Let me just switch it over. Um, yeah, we're getting a little bit of voltage, 73, 74 millivolts. So there is a little bit of something there. So I switch it back over to microamps. This is DC current, 0 0.7, 0 0.6 microamps. That's what we're getting. I got them all tied together. All of the antenna leads tied together. And oh, I should check the AC current too with them all tied together. Let me just punch it over. And got 11.9, 12 microamps, 11.9 microamps. And I could like disconnect one and it doesn't drop that much. The wires need to be further apart in order for them to add up totally they'll they add a little bit to each other but they don't add up totally totally together you know we're getting 
uh, is in while it's registering 12 11.9 microamps 12 microamps so that's what we're getting on them and then when I tie these all together I can light those LEDs I'll just connect the ground I can just touch one side of this bridge rectifier with my fingers and the lights come on that's just me touching I'm not even I don't have a ground in my hand at all I can just touch the bridge rectifier and then the lights come on anyway I'll hook the ground up so I'm touching it right there and come on pretty bright whoops Oh, I gotta building up a building up blow my LEDs out if the voltage gets too high. That's one thing. I got this. I don't want that voltage on that little filter cap to get too high. Otherwise, it'll just blow out my LEDs because it will get up there. Harvesting power off of antenna wires is just something fun to do. It's a curiosity, novelty. There's I haven't seen any real power that's anything significant. It's enough to light some LEDs, and that's fun. It's a lot funner if you get like a radio signal that's strong. Then you can really pull in maybe a few milliwatts like I did before. But if somebody was going to replicate this, I would recommend the copper mesh. That seemed to work the best and it's pretty inexpensive too and the source of the power i'm not sure i think it's just static in the airwaves it could be i don't know from anything it probably could be from some of those high voltage power lines that are you know over 100 yards away it could have a signal from there bouncing around too and Maybe different, I don't know, cell phone towers. Yeah, I just I just don't know what the you know the signal is. The frequency doesn't really register with anything. So I'm thinking it's just a bunch of static is what they're picking up. But anyway, it can be fun. The voltages were all about the same, but the copper mesh did pull in the most current. So I guess if somebody wanted to play around with it, I would recommend the mesh, the copper mesh. So there you have it. I hope you enjoy this little video and I'll catch you next time.